I bet you never thought you would be having some poetry lessons mixed in with your science. Well, guess what? They go just like cake and ice cream. Okay, maybe not that well. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about poetry. I want to talk about the pieces of poetry, and then I want to connect it to something that we learned in our lessons today, which was the importance of birds. So I want to look at some bird poetry. All right, let's just read through. I just Googled birds and poems and came up with this poem. So the first thing I want to do is just like good reading strategies, regardless of what I'm reading, I want to look at the title. It says the hummingbird. Okay, I want to activate my prior knowledge of hummingbirds. Uh, I have some at my house. They have those really long beaks, wings that fly so fast, tiny little things. Um, the males have bright red colors and I can just see them zipping about and they just seem always doing something. Okay, so I've activated my schema. Now I can go through and kind of see how long this is. Okay, it's not too long, it's pretty easy. I noticed how it's arranged. It looks sort of like paragraphs, these chunks here. In poetry, those are called stanzas. So they don't call them paragraphs, they call them stanzas. And the other thing about poetry that you should know is they don't have to follow the traditional rules of punctuation. So you might see an author choose to put a comma in a particular place or not use a period or not capitalize or capitalize. Um, it's just the way poetry gets to write their own rules. Some things to notice, every word in every, or every first word in every line is capitalized. That's a poetry thing, okay? Um, you might notice as we read through some words rhyme, like feet, heat, um, hey, say, you'll notice that the rhyming kind of gives a rhythm to the poem, okay? So if you read things out loud, it kind of helps detail those. So let's read through this first, and then we'll go back through and look at some pieces of this poem. The Hummingbird by Brandon S. Hess. The rain has stopped and daylight delays. The night is calm and anticipates its rays. As morning breaks through, like a deer through the hedge, she is already found at a rose petal's edge. Such a simple life, portrayed in such hurry. Though it's all a day's work, there's no time for her to worry. Gathering nectar for food, her song she plays loud. Though merely a result of her flight, her songs she plays proud. So the next time you see her, don't say a single word, for you will have just missed the song of the hummingbird. Isn't that cute? I think it's really a sweet poem. So I read a poem through first, that's what I do. Look at the title, read it through, just kind of get a feel for how it sounds, how it kind of plays out to my ear. And then I go through and kind of look at specific pieces of the poem. So I look for rhyming words. Words. You see any words here that rhyme? If you notice delays, rays, that's a rhyming word. Um, hedge, edge, hurry, worry. So notice that the author here kind of has a pattern he or she is rhyming every second and fourth sort of line in the stanza, okay? Also look for things that make images pop up in your mind. So poetry really relies on word choice. Why do they pick the words that they pick, okay? Um, they try and paint you a picture. So here, like a deer through the hedge. That's a form of figurative language that really gives you a sense, a picture of what's going on. So if I see that line, like a deer through the hedge, I envision this very shy doe with these big eyes and she's kind of peering through the hedge because deer are very cautious about where they go. So that's the image that comes to my mind. And that might be different for your image. You might have a different image. Think about other words in here. Um, Song of the Hummingbird. There's not really any sort of the merely result of her flight. So we have some words in here, very common language, nothing big. Just keep in mind when you look at other poems, why did the author choose this word? Or why did they put this image here? Um, some other things that I want to talk about in in poetry and in writing, there's a technique called alliteration, and that's when you repeat the same syllable in the word, like the same sound of the word. So here's a great example, daylight delays. 
choosing that d, d sound kind of helps give you a rhyme and a rhythm and daylight delays and just kind of gives you this really cool sound to the, the poetry. Is there any other alliteration that we can pick out in this? Look for the same letter. Song she plays proud. So here we have one, her song she plays proud. So you have this, you even have the S at the end of plays, and then you jump to a hard P sound, plays proud. So that's another sign or another um, use of alliteration here that we found. Personification is another piece that you might find in poetry, and personification gives human qualities to things that aren't human. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Maybe you can find some of that stuff. All right, so we kind of broke down the poetry, the pieces, the elements of poems. Now let's go back and look at some of the meaning. So we want to look at the tone of the poem. Who's the author? Is it happy? Is it sad? What are they trying to convey? The rain has stopped and daylight delays. The night is calm and anticipates its rays. Does that make you feel happy or does that make you feel sad? What words did they choose? Daylight, calm, anticipates, rays, right? The rain has stopped. Everybody enjoys it when the rain stopped. <laughs> That's a good thing. So the image that he's trying to portray here and the meaning of this first stanza is that things are good, okay? It's just starting to daylight is hanging off it's not quite coming yet the night's calm and everybody is waiting they're anticipating that daylight sunshine to come through and then that leads us to the next stanza as morning breaks through like a deer through the hedge she is already found at a rose petal's edge so we have a setting okay there's a rose petal we have the morning and then we also have a character and it says she is already found now, if I had not read the title, I would not know what she stands for. But since I read the title, good reading strategy, I kind of have an idea that, hey, the author's talking about a bird. Because he's not talking about the deer that peers through the hedge, right? A deer's not going to sit on a rose petal's edge. All right, so we have this morning's breaking through. We have this cute little hummingbird. She's sitting on a rose petal's edge. And why did the author choose a rose petal and not thorn or blackberry, right? Painting that picture. Such a simple life portrayed in such hurry, though it's all in a day's work, there is no time for her to worry. Easy life, right? It looks like it's hurried because she's flittering from tree to tree or, root, or rose to rose, but essentially what the author is saying is that this bird just has a really simple existence. Get food, go from flower to flower, it's just work. Gathering nectar for food, her song she plays loud, though merely a result of her flight, her song she plays proud. What the author is trying to convey here is that although she's not speaking with a voice, she has that flight of her wings. And if you have any prior knowledge of hummingbirds, they have this zipping sound. It's bzz, bzz, bzz. It kind of just zips around you. So the author is trying to give you this like vision of what this bird is doing. It's just zipping around, it's causing, and her song is not that of a songbird, but it's that of her hard work. So the next time you see her, don't say a single word, for you will have just missed the song of the hummingbird. Take advantage of those things around you. Think about what nature has given, and I hope you enjoyed this little poetry lesson. I know I really enjoyed this poem. So you're going to have an assignment where you apply sort of your own analysis to a different poem. And I hope you have fun doing that.